Okay, we're going to talk about adjustment layers, and let me make this image a normal size here. Control zero fills the screen with our image. Okay, I can do a levels on this by pressing Control L, or I can go up to Image Adjustments, Levels, and Curves. Uh, let's do levels first. So we get this box. And let's just say I really want to bump the contrast on this because I'm going to paint it or whatever. So I, I'm really bumping the contrast quite a bit as you can see. Let's do the preview. Big difference. Click OK. We have nothing over here to show for what we just did. If we want to see it, we have to look in our uh, history palette and you see we got the levels right here. But if we keep on in our merry way working on things, uh, this change that I just made is permanent. I can't go back and fine tune it. Even now, I can't fine tune it. I can go to edit, edit, sorry, and fade levels. But once I make another move, let's cancel that and let's just paint something real quick. I'll just click on a regular paintbrush get a regular brush going here and we'll make it kind of hard and we'll go with red so we can see it very easily so we go like that and now let's say well you know what I, I made that contrast really harsh let's undo some of that you can fade the brush tool, as you can see, but you can't any longer fade the levels. So we're stuck with that, you know, that level change. So let's just go back in our history to before we did the levels. And instead of doing the image adjustments levels or curves, Let's go up here, and here's the little icon for running levels. It's not as big, but it's still just as powerful. If I grab this, bring that in, bring this up, we can create the same kind of contrast as we did using the regular uh, levels panel. But now when I collapse that, you see that we not only have a levels change but we have a levels mask so if I want to double click on this and change it back I can change it to whatever I want to and we're not stuck with it let's just say let's go back there one more time let's take this way down and collapse that and let's paint with black right now on the barn and make my brush bigger with my right bracket key and see we're bringing back the the uh, copy that's underneath here we haven't done anything to permanently change it because it's all in this mask well let's say I'm going to change I'm going to switch the brush to white paint that back in and this time I'm going to change the opacity I'm going to switch it back to black and this time I'm going to paint it in a little at a time to open up some of the areas and I'm going to soften my brush all the way up and I'm just going to go up in here and paint a little bit right in there see how I'm just bringing the shadows back a little bit at a time If you look in the layers palette, you see I'm painting basically with gray because the opacity is turned down to 18%. So I can keep doing this and bringing back as much detail as I want to. I can do the same thing anywhere on the image. If I change the opacity of the brush, I bring it back, obviously, much faster. Let's control Z that. If we get the right buttons 
and we'll lighten that back up over here. So hopefully that shows you the difference between just a regular panel and the panels that we have up here uh, for adjustments. This will stay there if I make uh, other copies, if I put text down. Um, see the new text is there but I still have my adjustment layer and we'll keep the adjustment layer uh, if we save it as a PSD file the adjustment layer will still be there when we open it back up so it's a very powerful way to work versus how I used to work all the time and would do a regular control L and bring this up and then have nothing over here to show for that change Hopefully this little tip helped. This is a little tutorial about uh, putting an image or a, um, let's say, a texture file over the top of another image. In this case, I'm going to move the deer picture over into this image here of the other barn. And I'm just going to basically click on the Move tool. I'm going to click hold it down, left click, hold it down, drag it up to the other image until the other image appears and then just drag it back down and let go. The deer is really big but it's there so I can do a control T and I need to make this smaller and hold down the shift key and so now we have the deer inside the other picture control zero makes them both the same size so now I can mask these things out so I can simply put a layer mask over here and paint with black. So I turn on a brush, I hit the letter B. And that's a pretty soft brush and the opacity is way down so I'll run it up to 100. And remember we're not erasing anything, we're only hiding what's on this layer and letting the bottom layer show through. Sometimes this is the quickest way instead of making a selection. Sorry I keep hitting the Windows key and let's make this a little bit harder let's click on here and harden the brush up a little bit so it doesn't just spray all over the place as I paint get down here close the deer and I'm not going to do a super good job you guys already know how to use these tools I'm sure but I'm just going to paint a little bit so you can have the idea and if you look over there in the layers palette on the mask you can see what's being masked and what's being left alone so the deer on the current layer we're leaving it alone now here you can soften your brush up and uh, kind of take the fur down gradually otherwise uh, you can just really smooth I've seen people use this on on hair like a woman's hair and you'll just be chomping her hair all off smooth and it'll look really crazy so to avoid that you just soften the brush edges up you know you just go up here and turn hardness all the way off and that way you can paint and not destroy all the hair or in this case fur so I'm just I shouldn't be painting with that soft brush right now but we don't want to keep using time switching back and forth right now we're gonna say this is wonderful let me get around the ears so that doesn't look too weird and remember, if, I, if you or I or anyone else messes this up, 
all we have to do is paint with white just press the letter X to toggle over to white and we bring in the other image again to do control Z on that got a little space in between the legs and if you know anything about me you know I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff got to paint with black because little hints like that are called giveaways and then we got more to go I had the image shrunk down so far or blown up so far that couldn't see all that we're not going to take any more time getting this in here uh, let's say we want to add something else into the image let's say we're going to put this owl in the image also so I click on the move tool and I go up and let it hover onto the barn image and then move it down into the image and let go and obviously the eagle is uh, I don't know what I called it a while ago anyway the eagle is uh, pretty large control T T is in tango to make this smaller and I'm gonna move this up to the top now there's one one reason I'm I'm doing this I'm gonna make this bigger I need to be able to command all these C's here so again I'm gonna put um, a nice little layer mask on there turn on the brush and begin painting with black make sure black is on top and we just paint away gotta get all that or it just makes smeary stuff all over your image and doesn't look good at all get in there a little bit closer or a lot closer make the brush smaller and this is another place where a smoother brush would probably be advisable but time is of the essence so we're just going to make do so now I have the eagle sitting up here on top of the barn he's looking cool looking around alright we're starting to get some layer accumulation the common theme here or the theme I guess is farm farm animals wildlife whatever you definitely not farm animals are they they're wildlife so let's put them in their own uh, composition layer folder um, comp layer I think is what they're called or comp folders right down here it looks like a little manila folder it's got the tab on it and everything. I'm just going to call this wildlife. And then I'm going to click and drag and drop that in there. Click and drag and drop that in there. So if I click this little down arrow, they're all hidden in the wildlife folder. So I can, if I want to work on them, I can just click on them and just do like before and I can go ahead and finish painting the deer voila just like that the deer is taken care of anyway I really like layer comps and uh, I think if you give those a try you're going to like them as well so let's click uh, turn that off you can have all of these uh, layer comps that you want so you could put a hundred layer comps in there and drop uh, tons of wildlife just in that folder or you know whatever else if you're doing flowers and you've got a selection of butterflies and things like that you can put them all in flower <laughs> all the flowers and folders as well as your butterflies and so on so it can really make a world of different to have something that convenient that will allow you to get things out of your way so to speak it also allows you the versatility of creating different looks for your image so I think that's important too to be able to click those things off and on and know exactly where to go to turn them off and on alright sometimes we create images uh, that need text in them for explanation or for a card or publication something that we just need to have some text in 
sometimes we don't know uh, the the size of the font that we want and we want to change it on the fly so I'm just going to put some text in here so you can uh, see what I mean and to do that we need to uh, click on the text tool and just click anywhere if we want to you know type a sentence we need to click and drag a text box but we're just going to put uh, I don't want Z old arm and click down here to move that over and let's select that and change it so we can see it a little bit better so I'm going to make this white instead and click OK so now you can see how big the text is it's fairly large but let's double click over here in the layers palette on the T and go up here to where the font size is and right here by the 72 points to the left hand side there's a double T one small one large T if you click on that and hold your mouse down you can click or you can just drag your mouse and it will resize that for you click on the uh, move tool and it will commit that change and again if you don't like it double click on the text over here in the layers palette to select it and again come over here to the double T's and click and just drag your you know just move your mouse to the left move your mouse to the right to resize it click on the commit button up here or on the move tool and your text is completed here's a photograph I took a long time ago uh, Garden of the Gods by Harrisburg Illinois and I'm going to move this image over into my other barn image so I'm going to turn on the move tool if it's not already on click hold and drag up to the other barn it'll pop open in a week or two doesn't want to let me try it again now my computer's frozen let's try again click there it goes and there we go so this time to get it perfectly squared when I drop it I'm gonna hold down the shift key and it'll lay that right dead center for me so here's what I'm gonna do I don't need to make it much bigger I only want to fill the old farm the words with the picture so I'm just gonna do a control T and drag that up a little bit right there double click inside the image to complete the transform and I'm going to create something called a clipping path and here's what we do we go over here to the uh, image of the sunset and right between the two layers I want my mouse to be and I'm gonna hold down the alt key and notice it changes to a down arrow with a white box that means it's going to clip this image into the layer underneath which is the text so let me just click once and now that sunset is inside old farm so let me blow that up so you can see it better see the old the old clouds in there this works uh, with any type of vector graphic you can drop stuff in so let's just go down here to and I'm going to turn the text off here and I'm going to turn that off and let's go down here to the uh, tool the uh, custom shapes and let's go to the bottom custom shape tool up here at the top we have all of these shapes and uh, I loaded more because I went over here to the little gearbox and and uh, appended a bunch more as you can easily see um, you know it's it's you know a matter of personal choice what you want to try to use let's get something though that's kind of big um, 
let's try the four leaf clover and let just click up there and that, that goes away so I can click and drag the four leaf clover however big I want it to be now I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to bring the fire image over again the uh, sorry fire sunset and turn on the move tool click hold it down and then drag up to old barn till it comes on move it down into the image a little bit hold down the shift key so it'll drop it in the center let go there it is this time I'm gonna make it bigger so I I can roll it around a little bit more double click let's resize that whole thing make sure we're covering it good now I want to clip let's move the shape on top of this and uh, no I want it up there sorry I'm gonna go between the two layers with the alt key held down it turns into the little down arrow and when I click there it is inside that shape so just about anything that uh, you can use shape tool wise any text and if you create something using the pen tool uh, and reconnect that it would also clip into a path so there you have that sometimes I get a little frustrated making selections and especially if there's something big and I don't want to you know make a really great selection around it if I you know don't need to and I you know using the lasso tool is okay for some things but a lot of times we need a soft selection and quick and the best tool to do that is the quick mask tool so we turn on a regular brush and just press the letter B if you want to do that then uh, just press the letter Q or go down here to the bottom of the tool palette right here is a square with a little circle in it with dots so if you double click that you'll see this little options box it will default to saying masked areas that's exactly backwards it should say selected areas and I'm going to show you why I'm just going to paint with a fairly large brush and I'm going to get rid of this so I'm just painting a selection and I, I want to get rid of the boat and the people too so I'm just going to paint all that this used to be in the old photojournalism and photography days this was called uh, red acetate and um, now it's part of Photoshop I can make my uh, brush a little smaller and just you know it doesn't have to be anything too terrific so all I have to do is click back on that box again or just press the letter Q and there you see the selection I cut a little too close to the edge of the the boats so I'm going to hit Q again to go right back in to the quick mask and make sure I get all the boat otherwise you see some really weird stuff happen and that's not good so I hit Q again now I'm going to go up to edit fill and content aware fill click OK give Photoshop a couple of minutes a few seconds whatever it takes and voila do a control D to turn that off we got some floaties here so I'm just going to again whoops I'm just painting with red now and the way you can tell it's too red so I'm gonna do a control Z and press the letter Q for the quick mask and print or paste paint something like that I'm gonna paint a few more little places and hit Q again looks like it did kind of a bad job there so hit Q again and get more of that Q again edit fill content aware okay and now we're in good shape it fixed that island back there and all is well we can happily let the people sail off into the sunset that's it 
Oh, and I should also mention that the uh, quick mask mode is a great way to make other kinds of selections too. For example, what if I wanted to select this? I can go over to the elliptical marquee tool and I can punch in the Q for quick mask mode and I can make my brush I'm sorry I don't want the elliptical I want my brush tool and make my brush let's make it hard all the way around so we take the hardness all the way to 100 percent and I can just make a brush that's almost the same size of this but since it's oval I can't you know just fill that so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller than I need to so punch in the quick mask should see this up here on the title of your image and we'll just click right there I think you can see what I'm doing here not particularly difficult to do just want to make sure that whole thing is filled nicely if I hit Q again you see we've made a good selection around it. So now I can do a control J and there's my selection. It's not perfect, I did it very quickly, but it does do a nice trick for us. So quick mask uh, can be used for several things. Uh, one of the things I've used it for is removing stop signs and so forth. Just paint the stop sign in and do the content aware fill and so forth. Alright, on to the next what if I want to take this image and make it look like a painting, run some filters on it? What if I want more than one filter at the same time? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at right here. I'm going to go ahead and do a Control J to make a copy of the background. Then I'm going to go up here to Filter and Convert for small, Smart Filters. Click OK. Uh, this will enable me to go back and edit anytime I want to uh, till we get it where we want it, basically. So let's go to Filter and down to the Filter Gallery. And inside the Filter Gallery we've got, uh, actually we've got several things here that we don't need to have in there. Uh, you can take a look and see which one of these you might want to run. This is awfully large, so I'm going to move that down so the barn is the prominent thing in the image so let's see what the watercolor looks like let's uh, play with our little controls here see what it looks like okay let's make that one of them let's uh, click on the little new filter effect right here at the bottom of the the palette whoops I created two that's alright uh, I meant to create three eventually so let's turn one of these eyeballs off let's actually turn a couple and we're gonna click on something else here to see what the effect is with that so let's see what a different stroke link will do There you see it running, so it takes a minute sometimes. That's a little too heavy-handed. Let's back off. Still pretty heavy. See what taking the sharpness down does. I like that. Bring that back a little bit more. Okay, we'll say we, we love that one. Turn that one off, and let's go see what we can do with this one. Spatter looks pretty weird. How about this one. Now let's see what they all look like. Oh, it's running. Pretty heavy handed. Let's click OK. Uh, you can see what it looks like. Pretty, pretty harsh. Uh, so all we got to do is go over here to the layers palette, click back on the filter gallery, just double click that and we go right back in and we can change any of these we want to so let's look at the sprayed strokes without these two on that doesn't look too bad that's with both of these let's let's change the stroke length a little bit more on that one 
watercolor I think is our biggest problem it's it's uh, pretty dark and that's the trick isn't it Just making it so it's not too too dark let's switch to something different that's not good let's try stylize no, we don't want that distort maybe that would make a better one let's try glass and click OK now that one's looking a lot better so anyway you can see that you can run multiple uh, filters on an image I don't recommend more than three or four but you can certainly do whatever you want why I like to do the filters separately is that I can put a mask on each filter and better control it that way but uh, you can also paint in this mask let's paint with our brush and just paint whoops that's very heavy-handed and uh, we need a soft brush and we need to drop the opacity and then we can kind of paint some of that back and you see over here in the mask what we did so multiple filters at the same kind can be done a lot of people do vignetting inside of Photoshop but I find it's very easy and pretty doggone accurate to do it inside of Camera Raw so I've got this same image in here from the Navy Pier in Chicago and um, I want to just vignette the corners a little maybe across the edges but I'm going to go over here where the FX is I call it the special effects button and right down here we don't want to add any grain to it we want we don't want our image to be noisy we want to go down here to a mount if this was a dark image and we wanted to lighten the um, vignette we would go to the right obviously to darken it we want to go to the left and all of these other things will help us fine-tune the effect and really the only way you know how to adjust this is eyeball it so you just take those edges in and out until you're happy they're just a tiny if you look up here in the corner you can see the highlights do just a little bit but not very much so anyway you are entitled to be just as heavy-handed or light-handed with this uh, vignetting but it can be very fun uh, it can add a little layer of interest and depth to what you're working on and make the viewer focus more to the inside or your subject matter okay by default Photoshop doesn't have a keyboard shortcut for transforming a selection if you remember you can go to you can make a selection uh, in any image and if you can't get the shape just right what are you going to do well you can go to select and transform selection and hold down the control key and you can resize your selection uh, however you want to obviously for selecting this young man this key or this trick is not going to be helpful I don't really want to make a, a selection anyway right now but what if I wanted to adjust my keyboard so that would have a keyboard shortcut well all you have to do is go to edit down to keyboard shortcuts so in here you can find you can find anything in Photoshop you want like if there's a particular filter that you really like if it has a keyboard shortcut now you can change it see you highlight it just by clicking on it and click on accept and it'll warn you there's already an existing control key for this but that's okay uh, you can set it however you want and I would you know come up here and, and uh, reset it if you have a problem with it you can also go in here and change the menu things so there's a lot of power in here to 
set up Photoshop the way you did it, you know, makes your workflow even better. There are lots of things in here that you may not even know what the keyboard shortcuts are. And uh, this is a great place to come and, f and find those things. So here's, here's the different tools. All the shortcut uh, letters are there. So it's very, very handy way to set up your own keyboard effects. And if you notice my selection, transform selection, I changed it to control or alt control and one will let me transform my selections. So I do a control alt one and now you see I've got the bounding box and I can change the the shape of my selection anytime I want to. Okay, I'm going to make a selection of this young man and then I'm going to do a little thing called Puppet Warp on him. I took this guy's little guy's picture at the Navy Pier in Chicago and let's just get started here. Turn on the quick selection tool. Let's make a copy of that layer. I'll do a control J and and hopefully have it on the quick selection tool. That's what's needed. I want to make sure all these fingers are selected. Get a shirt here. Make sure we get plenty of ear. Go out a little bit and get some of that hair because he's got some nice curly hair out there. And that was not necessary, computer. Yeah, it's wanting to snap out there. I'm going to do an alt key here to get rid of some of that. And there a little bit. And we're going to say good enough. I'll click on refine edge. And you see what we have. Generally the edges are fairly decent. I'm going to bring the radius over just a little bit. And I'm going to paint. and get rid of all this stuff I can did a pretty good job right through here I'll get some more and let's smooth it just a tiny tiny bit and you can you know do this on whichever one of these variations you want to look at this with and I just a lot of times I'll work with uh, black and other times I'll work with it being on white. You know, you can use any of these. For this one, I like the the white. All right, let's go and feather that just maybe a tiny, tiny bit. I usually like to click on decontaminate. I usually leave it right at 50. Uh, shifting edge to the left will take this in just a little bit, which is fine and click OK. Oops, before we do that, make sure this is on New Layer with Layer Mask. Click OK. And here we go. Here's our new layer with a layer mask. Now I'm going to turn this layer into white just for this particular thing. And to do that, notice my white is my background color. So to fill this with the background color, hold down Control and hit backspace. If it were the foreground color we wanted to fill with, it would be alt backspace. Okay? We left a hole right there in his shirt. But we're going to pretend <laughs> that we didn't do that. I didn't see the, that in the selection. Anyway, the important thing is we've got to fix uh, the blurs and so forth. And we lost part of the ear. So I'm going to click right on him and go over here to the art history tool. I'm going to make this bigger and just paint that back in. And that's not helping. So let's see here. Let's paint with the mask. Got to use black. Here we go. All right. Now then, a little bit right here, paint that back in. 
And then to get rid of the other stuff, the blurs that are there, we're going to paint with white. And make sure you've got a nice um, clean brush. Make sure we don't have any smears. Looks pretty good, right? And we could probably make this a little bit darker. Got to paint with white again. Let some of that background come come back through. X to paint with black. And get rid of that little deal there. Okay, so we've got a good selection of him. It's on his own layer. The hair looks good. Everything's happy, happy, happy. So now we're going to do a thing called puppet warp. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this layer mask. So he's right there on his own layer. And I'm going to go to edit puppet warp. And notice it puts a wire frame all the way around our little guy. So what we do to click, we need to create uh, drop pins is basically what you're doing. So you click in several places. I guess we've already got our, some of our pins in there according to it. Put one there, there, maybe not. Will you let me, there we go. And let's come down here and then I'm going to go over to this other side. Got to get him at the neck. And that, and maybe one up here. So now I should be able to go in here and rotate him a little bit. Oh, I need to put some more pins in. So I went on down here. Let's say we want to bring this hand up. So I've only got these three pins on his arm. And I can click on any one of those. Notice a little white dot appears on the active pin. I'm going to click here and put the active dot right on this hand. And I can move his hand up and down however I want to. Okay, so now if I uh, go up here to the top right and commit, now you see what it moved to. So if we go into history, that's before and that's after. Before and after. We can rotate the head, we can rotate the body, and so forth, but sometimes it's handy to uh, to be able to move individual parts and make things work.